Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. And today I wanna to help you through the planning process to know how deep do you dig a trench when you're laying a drainage line for a downspout or maybe a sump pump discharge. In my exact scenario, I have both of those. I have a downspout and a sump pump discharge that's kind of temporarily routed and dumping out into my yard and kind of making a swampy mess. So once and for all, I wanna run those permanently through a single wall corrugated pipe and away from the foundation so I don't have to worry about it. There's just a couple things you need to take into consideration. So let me walk you through on the whiteboard behind me how to calculate those so you can make the plan and know exactly how deep to dig that trench and maintain the proper slope for your drainage. So if you just know the actual length or run of your drainage, you can do the calculation to know what type of rise or elevation change are you going to have to account for to make sure the water drains through the pipe. What you'll do is just use a simple calculation, which is rise over run equals slope. Now, because I'm using single wall corrugated pipe, I'm going to use 1.25%. But if you were using like a schedule 40 PVC, you could use 1% and be okay. So I do know my run, which is 36 feet, or if I multiply by 12, I can get the number of inches at 432 inches. So I know my rise over 432 inches equals 1.25%. We'll rearrange that equation a little bit. So we will multiply the 1.25% and put that in decimal form. So you just move the decimal place two spots here. So that's 0 0.0125 times the 432 inches of run. And that's going to give us our rise at four point, sorry, at 5.4 inches. I'm going to round up and I'm going to go with six inches. So that's what I'm going to plan to need an elevation change from the start to the finish. The finish of my pipe should be six inches lower with a consistent slope along the run. So now we know how much elevation we need or rise we need for the project. And that is gonna be a critical piece that we're gonna use in planning out how deep to dig the trench. Now, each of our yards is gonna be a little different. Some are gonna have extremely flat yards. Some are gonna have hopefully not too much of a negative slope back to the house. That is not something you want to have. And then some are gonna have a very aggressive slope away from the house. In my case, it's overall pretty flat, but I do have about a foot elevation change. The way I found that was just using string, two stakes, and a line bubble level. And if you don't know how to do that, you can check this video right here, and I'll walk you through the full process. But that is where I'm going to get these measurements from, is referencing that level line. So if you don't know how to do that, jump back on that video, get a little bit more information, and then you can jump back, and this should make more sense. So trying to get as close as possible to these numbers here, so you can see how I calculated everything and then apply that to your application. So I have my house over here, downspout, which is one of the main lines, but also the sump's gonna come right in here. This is my starting point. So with my green line here, this was my level line that I put in the yard. I measured at the starting point, nine foot out I took a measurement, 18 foot out, 27 foot out, and 36 out, so I just had multiple reference points that I marked with an orange marking spray paint in the yard. So those will be my references that I'll be checking my depth when I'm digging the trench. At the starting point here from the level line to the actual ground was 12 inches. Now I'm going to use this to know how much the ground has either come up in elevation, stayed the same, or down in elevation. And that's gonna help me know from the ground surface at each of these points, how much do I need to dig down to set the pipe in the bottom to maintain that 1.25% slope? Now I do have a starting depth here where I have four inches of corrugated pipe and then 10 inches of dirt on top of that. So the trench depth at the start, I'm going to be doing 14 inches. Now I take that same 14 inches and I know across one quarter of my length, I need to lower 1.5 inches for my slope. So I'm gonna add that onto the 14, but I'm also need to add on two. And that's because at my nine foot mark here, my ground actually comes up. 
it comes up two inches. So thus I have to dig from the ground level, I have to dig a little deeper to maintain that slope of the corrugated pipe. That can be a little confusing, but something critical that you need to account for because if you don't account for the undulations of your ground, your pipe is definitely not gonna drain properly. So all that added up at my first nine foot marking point, I know the depth needs to be 17.5 inches below the top surface. And that will give me my little over 1.25% grade. Now, if I go out to my next mark, again, I'm gonna take that starting 14 inches. I'm gonna add on three inches for the slope, right? 1.5 inches here, three inches now here to maintain that slope. And I know both of these starting point and this point are at 12, so there's no additional compensation made. So I know the dig depth needs to be 17 inches at my second checkpoint. Then I go to my third checkpoint here. I again take 14 inches. I'm adding the slope and now it is 4.5. So it's 1.5 here, three inches here, 4.5 inches here but now I'm actually subtracting three inches and that's because the ground is starting to go down, it's starting to slope down. And that is signified by 15 inches between my level line and the ground surface opposed to my starting 12 inches. So if you, if you add this up to 18.5 and then you subtract your three inches, you get, I'll need to be 15.5 inches below the surface at my third checkpoint. And then at the end of the run, at the end of the line, where I'll be putting in my pop-up emitter here, I'll take that 14 inches, I'll add six inches, and that's my total slope needed, my total rise needed throughout the run of the corrugated pipe. And I'll subtract off 12, because this is actually 24 inches from the level line to the, the ground level. So I compared 12 inches to 24, that's 12 inches difference, and I subtracted that off. So adding the 14 and the six, you get 20, you subtract off your 12, and that's, I'm gonna need to go eight inches down, which is great because it is something I also need to account for is the actual pop-up emitter itself. I can't sink this 14 inches because then the pop-up emitter would be there and I'd have to do like a connection pipe and that's just not ideal. So eight inches is actually gonna be pretty close to what I need here because it's about seven inches from the bottom here to the top of this 90 degree elbow. So I'm not sure how much you guys love or hate math, but that is how I calculated it. And I'm gonna take that nine foot, 18, 27 foot in the end of the run. That's where I'm gonna be checking my trench depth and then just using a two by four in the middle to make sure it's a smooth surface between each checkpoint. That's my plan for my project. I'll be doing that later on. And there'll also be a video on the overall complete drainage project that I'm doing. Now, if you have any questions, there's a lot of different scenarios when it comes to drainage that you have to account for and each one of our yards or properties is gonna be different. So jump down in the comments, let me know, and I'll help as much as I can. And finally, if you haven't already and you like this sort of content, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with repairs and improvements around the house, and we'll catch you on the next one.